All right, guys, let's watch this and talk about it after. Baby. Hey, hang it there. Baby, are you all right? Is everything okay? Everything is okay with me, but I don't know for you. Everything was fine between us before I left for work. So, what happened while I was away? What's this? What? What is this? 50% of my properties a settlement for the divorce? What were you thinking? That you would divorce me and I will be stranded? Everything is becoming clearer now. This is the reason you've been frustrating my life. So that you can force me to ask for a divorce and you can cash out with such ridiculous settlements. You want a divorce and I will be signing the papers on this condition. Try again, Vivian, because this is not going to work. Yes? Hmm? Nothing. Please, can you just let me pass through? And what's that in the bag? Mm, these are ingredients. For? What are ingredients used for? I am here to cook for my boss. I notice he's been losing weight lately and I can't watch him go through that stress. I am here to help as the personal assistant. Is it that you can't even wait for me to leave before you, you show this desperate side of you? Are you not out already? It's the likes of Mr. Charles. They are rare to find these days and you just let him slip out of your hands and I will gladly accept him. What's going on here? Good evening, sir. I tell you to come make you dinner. I notice you've not been feeling well lately and... I don't understand. Ah. I don't understand. Yeah, that's, that's okay. What's it Amara, you really shouldn't have bothered. Since you're here already, you can go ahead. Eh? The divorce papers, with all the settlements you requested, accepted. Mm -hmm. Signed? I need to tell you something. So I make you cross paths with this guy. Mm -hmm. You make him fall in love with you. Yes. And I'll convince him to go into a relationship with you. That will lead to marriage in a space of six months. Yes. And afterwards, you file for a divorce and demand for 50% of his properties. Who is this guy? You sound so close to him. He's my brother. My father willed everything to him and left me with nothing. Wow. That's bad. Bravo, Kate. All right, guys. So in this one, we're going to be talking about the movie A Piece of Me. As you guys can see, this really boils down to inheritance. The African culture has kind of made it seem like it's only men. Well, I wouldn't say kind of made it seem like. The African culture is clear when it comes to inheritance, landed property. And as unfair as it might sound, it's the men in the family that inherit landed property. Now, this is based on tradition. So if a man decides to change this tradition for his particular family, it's on him to write a will, a will that would distribute his wealth, landed or non-landed accordingly you know, amongst all his children, male and female. However, when there is no will that clearly defines this, the issue of tradition now starts kicking in. You will even see scenarios where although there is a will, the extended family, the uncles and the brothers of the deceased would insist that is the man that should still inherit. Now, let's fast forward this to a situation where you as the boy in the family gets all the wealth which is what happened in this movie the guy inherited everything and now the you know sister is jealous and you know even set him up to lose half of it uh, not factoring in the fact that you are losing it through a third party that might also disappoint you you know when she acquires that half of his wealth but let's just look at the elephant in the room and that's a scenario whereby the man has now inherited everything, but he has sisters that didn't inherit anything. 
For those that are not familiar with the African tradition that I'm talking about, the tradition factors it in like this, because it's not like they are trying to be unfair. The way they look at it is this. A man is the one that's going to preserve the wealth of the family. Now, the woman, all the girls in the house, it's presumed that they're all going to get married. And when they get married, they're going to marry another man. And that man has his inheritance from his own family lineage. So the wealth stays in the same family. Now, what I want to talk about here is this is really talking to the guys that tend to inherit all this stuff. Because, you know, we've seen a lot of these frictions going on inside family units where either the girls are not happy with the guy that inherited it or the guy inherited it, but he has some younger brothers that felt like they were not treated fairly in the inheritance. Uh, and all this usually happens when there's no will. So keep that in mind. Uh, when there's no will, a lot of things uh, is kind of somehow handed down to the eldest son. And now the eldest son is, you know, is now on him to, you know, use good judgment to make sure that everybody gets something. Of course, that good judgment is subjective and many people would, um, you know, not be as fair as possible for whatever reason, for whatever reasons best known to them. But the key thing is, if this happens to be the case, all these first sons uh, or only sons, uh, it's always a good thing to, you know, rope your younger brothers or your sisters you know, into such inheritance, especially when you see that they need it. Because that assumption that they're going to marry into another man's wealth. So, you know, their husband is going to also have his inheritance trickle down. It always is not like that. You know, some people don't even have inheritance to share. And, you know, if they happen to marry such person out of love, then, of course, there's nothing she ends up with nothing so it's always a good idea for this you know elder sons or the you know only son if you happen to inherit everything in this case you know try to bring your siblings in you know especially if you have brothers or if you have sisters whichever the case may be and this is really necessary so you know you keep the bond and, you know, the brotherly and sisterly bond that you guys had while young, you know, you maintain it growing up. Now, uh, if you happen to be the breadwinner and you have siblings that are really young, that you still have to train them in school, then, and, you know, maybe down the line, you had to sell one thing here or there to train them, then, you know, yeah, that's what you should do. Try to be fair, guys. Try to be fair. Um, and I say this because... I know how these things are. Um, when you end up being the only son, you know, things kind of somehow are left for you. But, you know, in the true sense, you know, when you have sisters, it's a good idea to always share. If you have junior brothers, it's a good idea to bring them in. You know, everybody is still going to grow. So, you know, whatever you do, even if, this happens when they were still kids, they are going to let her grow and they're going to know what you did, what decisions you took for the inheritance that the parents left in your, in your care. It's always a good thing to be fair. Uh, if you are going to be sharing it, you know, somewhat reasonable. Uh, if you are not sharing it, but you're still keeping it in the family, then, you know, make sure everybody has access to whatever that it is. You know, um, you know, some people maybe inherit, you know, apartment complexes for instance you know and there's money coming out of it from rent you know you know let your you know let your siblings be part of that you know rent money uh, that comes through every year or every month depending on how the rent is being collected you know let them be part of it in that way um, nobody feels left out and nobody feels like they were not regarded as part of the family such situation that we saw in that movie would not happen where a sister would now try to set up her brother uh, with another woman just to gain access to half of his wealth so that's it for this one guys um, if you love this kind of content please like share subscribe follow
This is CJ from McNally Studios and I'm here to deliver sales.